Good evening, esteemed faculty, staff, parents, guests, and most importantly, students. Thank you, Mr. Saylor and the tribe for leading us in the school alma mater. We welcome you from wherever you are watching and pray that you are all safe and healthy. It has been an honor and a privilege to celebrate you by organizing and collaborating to produce this publication and bring closure to the end of your high school career. The great news, you have persevered, you have become the first, you will hit it out of the park, you will go the distance, you will improve your vision, and you will get to write the rest of your story. Well, at least by the end of the ceremony, you'll hopefully know what I mean by all of those statements. Chuck Swindoll said, life is 10% what happens to you and 90% how you respond to it. I asked the class, how will you respond? You will respond just as you have in the past with class, integrity, grit, and perseverance. As your high school career ends, there are new beginnings. Take the most of every opportunity and react in a way that you know best how. Endurance is one of those untaught but learned skills during your tenure with us. Learn to use all your untaught but learned skills that you have picked up all along the way. C.S. Lewis once said, there are far, far better things ahead than what you leave behind. I wish you the best in your future endeavors and that far better things are waiting for you in this world. Best of luck, class of 2020. It is now my honor to bring to the podium Caitlin Maxwell for the invocation. Caitlin. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for the opportunity to gather here tonight as a class. Even though we were all in our separate homes and going our separate ways, as much as we would have loved to celebrate his ending to our high school career together, we still have a lot to be thankful for. For you have showered us with many blessings throughout our high school career. Thank you for all the teachers, coaches, parents, siblings, classmates, and memories that we have made. At this time, I would like to lift up all of our classmates that maybe could not have made it here tonight to join us in this online celebration. And I would also like to lift up all of the healthcare workers that are working on the front lines as we are sitting in the comfort of our homes. Please touch every one of these seniors' lives tonight and be with them as they venture out into the next chapter of their lives. In your name we pray, amen. I would now like to introduce Mr. Mark Bullman, Executive Director of the Bedford County Technical Center for a special message. Congratulations to the class of 2020 on this important milestone in your lives. I want to especially congratulate those students who, in addition to their high school diploma, are also graduating from the Bedford County Technical Center. The graduation ceremony is different this year due to conditions in our state, nation, and even the world. To some, that is no doubt a disappointment. However, do not let world events diminish the accomplishments that you have earned. As you move into the next phase of your lives, whether it be to higher education or straight into the workforce. You are taking with you knowledge that you have gained over many years of work. It is our hope that you will take with you two golden rules that we have tried to instill in you. First, hard work and perseverance and good things will come to you. It may take a while, just as arriving at this point in your life took many years of hard work. But if you work hard and hang in there, good things will happen. Anything worth remembering does not come easy. The second golden rule to take with you is, whatever you do in life, always do your best. You see, compensation in life can be monetary gain, it can be prestige, but the most important compensation is knowing that you are good at what you do and that what you do is important. That satisfaction is worth more than money. It is our wish that you take these golden rules with you in the recesses of your mind and in your character. They will serve you well. Thank you and best wishes. I now would like to introduce Dr. Webb, Superintendent, to give the Valedictorian and Salutatorian Awards. Good evening. It is an honor to represent the Everett Area School District and the Everett Area Board 
to present this year's highest academic awards from this educational institution. We continue to strive for academic improvement and excellence. The following awards recognize those students who have performed at the highest academic levels. Each year, educational institutions award students with academic honors, the highest of those being the valedictorian, the second highest being the salutatorian. Selection is extremely difficult as these top students are often only separated by small details. Academic success at this level requires a strong commitment to excellence and many hours of hard work. I will recognize three students this evening who have gone above and beyond with their work ethic, dedication, and commitment to education. I will start by recognizing the second highest academic award, that of the salutatorian. This year, the Everett student who achieved this honor is Kristen Ewing. The highest academic honor presented by an educational institution is that of the valedictorian. This year, we have two students who share that honor. First, Caitlin Maxwell. The second valedictorian we will honor this evening, Allison Clavoon. Thank you. I will now turn this over to Allison Clavoon. Good evening. Our time as students at Everett High School has come to an end. It truly has been one wild ride. I am sure that our class has had the teachers and staff double checking the age of retirement from our first day of kindergarten. Our 13 years have been unique. Great people, once in a lifetime memories, and forever friends. Our journey has been full of firsts, but as Ricky Bobby says in Talladega Nights, if you ain't first, you're last. We were the first sixth grade class at the new middle school, first class to get an early dismissal from the school year, first class not to drive Mrs. Clark crazy on the senior trip, and first class to have a graduation where no one is here to laugh at my jokes. All these firsts are just stepping stones to our next firsts. First day on the job, first day of college, first day of boot camp, and first year of marriage. First may be scary, like meeting someone new, starting a new class with an intimidating teacher, or taking your driver's test and hitting the curb three times trying to parallel park. That last one might just be me, but what I'm trying to say is, we have all faced new situations and stressful challenges. For example, chemistry tests, championship and playoff games, the time the power went out in second grade, and that time we thought the school was going up in flames, but it was actually just a bag of burnt popcorn. Not to even mention what we've experienced in our personal lives throughout our years together. We have survived the school parking lot with only a few dents and scratches, and we have pulled through the late nights and early mornings of cramming for tests. We never give up, and we know that persistence is key. This class is full of big hearts, and big brains that refuse to let each other give up. We push each other to be our best. Although the paths we take will each be different, we will always have the memories in that place in our big heart that is jammed full of every high school's class of 2020. Some of us will be doctors, welders, loggers, engineers, farmers, politicians, or teachers. But I know, no matter the job description, we will be good people. And I'll be proud to tell my future family that I went to high school with each and every one of you, and I miss it. I'll miss all of the laughs, the solid life advice from Mrs. Klein, eating cheese fries on fall Friday nights in the stands, 
and always having someone close by to lend me a piece of paper or a pencil. This class really seems to know what it means to work hard and what it means to have your back. I would like to finish by saying thank you to God, my family, all of my classmates, teachers, coaches, staff, and everyone watching this for shaping me and my fellow students into the people we are today. Good luck to everyone for their next steps in life, and I will leave you with this one quote by Joe Dirt to live your successful lives by. Life's a garden, dig it. I will now turn it over to my co-valedictorian, Caitlin Maxwell. Good evening, class of 2020. I am honored to be standing before you on your screen tonight, representing a supportive, loving, and determined class. It has been such an exhilarating and memorable ride, one that I would not have wanted to take with anybody else. I appreciate all the talent, dedication, and hard work that each of you brought to the school and your extracurricular activities, and I'm thankful for all of our parents, relatives, teachers, coaches, custodians, bus drivers, cafeteria workers, secretaries, volunteers, administrators, community, and everyone that has supported us in our endeavors, giving us an elementary, middle, and high school experience that we will never forget. As Allison said, this senior class has seen a lot of firsts. However, there is one thing we are not the first to do. We are not the first to have memorized Casey at the Bat, by Ernest Thayer for Miss Steele's 11th grade English final, and tonight I am sharing my rendition of that poem. The first stanza flashes us back to March 13th, the day that we were all together, and proceeds from there. The outlook wasn't brilliant for the senior class that day. The senior trip was canceled, the excitement cast away, and then when Oregon called off school and PA did the same, a sickly silence fell upon the halls that now were tame. A straggling few went home and cried in deep despair. The rest clung to that hope which springs eternal in the human breast. They thought, if only Tom Wolf could but change the school format. We'd love to keep on learning, and he is a Democrat. But stalling this corona germ proved hard to undertake, and the whole world would soon learn that it was not a piece of cake. So upon that stricken senior class, grim melancholy sat, for there seemed to be a chance that all our hopes would just fall flat. But Everett had no cases to the wonderment of all, and COVID could be beaten if we followed protocol. And when a rumor started that the virus could be cured, an online graduation did in fact seem quite absurd. Then from five million homes and more, there rose a magic spell. It rumbled through Elk County, it rang the Philly bell. It knocked upon Mount Davis and swept New York's doormat. For Tom Wolf, mighty Tom Wolf, was about to give a chat. There was worry in Tom's manner as he gave his speech with grace. There was stress in Tom Wolf's voice as beads of sweat rolled down his face. And then, responding to the facts that he was looking at, he closed down non-essentials to lower the death stat. 10,000 global cases had left everyone alert. 5,000 or more cases had left someone feeling hurt. Then while the Eastern Hemisphere saw numbers start to dip, we kept on social distancing so we could follow ship. And now the ill-infected droplets hurtled through the air and Bedford stood avoiding them while keeping it in prayer. Close by in Franklin County, the virus quickly spread and Bedford has two cases now, the news report just said. From the houses filled with seniors, there went up a big implore, like the scratching of a cat late in the night on your back door. Why us? What did we do? Our minds can't understand. And it's likely faith was gone, had not the father raised his hand. With a smile of loving kindness, the Lord's great power shone. He looked on us with mercy, he made his presence known. For he was in control, but what he planned we had no clue. But we still didn't get it, and our apprehension grew. Fraud, cried the senior class, and Echo answered fraud. But we just should have settled down and put our trust in God. 
for Tom Wolf had just closed the school, much to our disdain, and sports and class adventures had all gone down the drain. The quarantine is still not gone. The last goodbyes will wait. The current circumstance has left us all in a sad state. And now we can't meet at the place in which we all did grow. And now our year is shattered by the force of COVID's blow. Oh, somewhere in this favored land, there is a gleam of light. The rate is slowing somewhere. There is an end in sight. And somewhere grads are joyful, in that I have no doubt. That somewhere is right here, for we did not strike out. Clearly, the past couple of months of school, if we want to call it that, were not what we envisioned, and at times it may have seemed like we all struck out. But unlike Casey in the original poem, we did not come up empty. During this quarantine, we have had the opportunity to learn what Philippians 4.11 means, to be content whatever the circumstances, for God can get us through this time and any and all tough times with his strength. But we also know what it means to have plenty. Instead of focusing on the past couple of months, I want to focus on the memories our class has made, the playoff runs, the state competitions, the band camps, the banquets, the musicals, the football games, the long laughs with friends, the bus rides, the music concerts, the brew crew Fridays, the talent shows, and that one time we were kept a good hour past the bell due to the tornado warning. All these memories have shaped us into the people we are today. They lead us to a new chapter in our lives where we will venture out on our own. Don't let your missteps weigh you down, but rather learn from them and continue living the life that God planned for you. Pursue your passion. Class, the pitches are still coming. Your turn at bat is not over. Swing big, for I have all the confidence that each and every one of you can hit a home run. Thank you and God bless. Now Kristen Ewing, our salutatorian, will deliver her speech. It is my pleasure to virtually welcome you to Everett Area High School's graduation for the class of 2020. Whether you are a parent, grandparent, family member, or just a friend, I thank you for opening your computers tonight to celebrate the accomplishments of this year's senior class. I would also like to thank the administration, staff members, teachers, and parents for making this graduation possible. If you don't know who I am or why I'm up here, my name's Kristen Ewing and I'm this year's class salutatorian. I will be attending St. Francis University this fall in the Physician Assistant Program. I can confidently say that without the support from God, family, friends, teachers, and coaches, I would not have grown into the young woman I am today. It was their encouragement and guidance that has set me on my path for the future. I would like to thank everyone for their support. Everett has given me memories I will cherish throughout my life. It is hard to pick just a few moments over the past four years that were special. I will never forget Mrs. Feather's challenging anatomy and physiology class. I remember hours of studying with Caitlin on the way home from basketball state playoff games. But even after I finished the class, Mrs. Feather still took interest in my health career journey. I think it was the picture I gave her, but you'd have to ask her about that yourself. I will never forget what she said when I went to observe an open heart surgery. I thought you were gonna take me with you. She seemed as excited as I was. I'm very thankful for all she taught me and her determination to get the best out of me. I think all of the teachers at Everett are like this. They don't just care about what grades you get, they want you to succeed. And you can tell the compassion they have toward us. They are just as upset as we are about not finishing senior year. I had the opportunity to participate in band, softball, soccer, and basketball throughout my high school career. Being a high school athlete at Everett is truly a blessing. Although I saw most of my friends outside of sports because of similar classes, sports gave me a deeper relationship with them. There is something about line drills that just brings you closer together. I never thought I would finish my athletic career without my senior year of softball, but I am thankful for the many memories and all my activities. It is hard to express the love I have toward my teammates, coaches, and supporters over the past four years. None of us expected our senior year to end so abruptly. Who ever heard of an online graduation before this year? The class of 2020's high school experience reminds me of a book that ends in a cliffhanger. If you don't know what a cliffhanger is, I think Buffy Andrews said it best. A cliffhanger is when... 
Yeah, that's it. There's no definite ending. There are two types of cliffhangers, the good kind and the, well, the bad kind. A good cliffhanger is to steer the reader in the direction of buying the next book in the series, which is actually a strong marketing tactic. Examples of this would be Harry Potter or The Hunger Games. The author deliberately leaves a reader on the edge of his or her seat so they will buy the next book. But when there are no other books in the series, a cliffhanger can cause frustration and confusion to the reader, which is the bad cliffhanger. Nobody likes when there isn't closure. Some may compare our senior year to a bad cliffhanger, but I would have to disagree. We were able to enjoy the majority of our high school career, and I don't think we should let these few months define our experience. We are still the class of 2020. There are still many opportunities we can take advantage of. We read multiple books with cliffhangers during school. Teachers would hand out study guides that went along with the book. Usually the last question was always, how do you think this story should end? Everyone had their own idea. Whether the person made a Cinderella ending or a Romeo and Juliet ending, they all followed the same storyline. Every class has or will read the story of high school, but our story differs. Others were able to read the entire book, but our last few pages are left blank. Class of 2020, I think the time has come for us to fill in those last few blank pages. It may be far more difficult than reading the ending, but each of us can finish the story however we desire. We can either be the reader who after the book is over is left unfulfilled and longs for answers, or we can become the author and compose our own endings. Joyce Rachel once said, for a storyteller, an open ending leaves much room for imagination. For the inquisitive reader, however, it is a great source of anxiety. Class of 2020, I pray that all of you will be the storyteller. Don't let anything stop you from fulfilling your goals. I hope each of you write a series. Please don't leave anything as a cliffhanger until the book is over. I would like to thank the class of 2020 for giving me a wonderful high school experience. I have been taught something from every teacher and classmate, and I thank you for preparing me for what's next. 2 Corinthians 9.8 states, And God is able to make all grace abound to you, so that in all things, at all times, having all you need, you will abound in every good work. Class of 2020, we may not have had the closure we all have hoped for, but I pray you all take this as an opportunity to write your own story. You have been given all you need. And now it is my pleasure to introduce our class speaker, Mrs. Kelly Weingartner. For those of you that have never set foot in my classroom, hanging on the walls are motivational running quotes. In fact, I asked my students this year to respond to a writing prompt in which they needed to decide which quote was their favorite and describe how it could be applied to their lives. The majority of you chose one of my favorite metaphors. Life is a marathon, not a sprint. Go the distance. Well, class of 2020, if your time in high school does not emulate a marathon, I don't know what would. You've had ups and downs, but you've pushed through and made it to the finish line. With this in mind, I'd like to share with you some thoughts I've had while running my first marathon and maybe leave you with a little running wisdom to help you in your next race, life. The first thing that crossed my mind when I ran the Pittsburgh Marathon was, this is so cool. There were lots of people and the atmosphere was filled with a mixture of excitement, anticipation, and some anxiety. Many of you shared those feelings as you began your freshman year. How awesome. You were finally in ninth grade. Walking up those stairs to the high school wing, nothing could stop you. You were going to kick butt. You were ready and on your way. Although there may have been a few butterflies in your basket, those nervous pangs were nothing in comparison to a positive outlook for your upcoming years. This was going to be a breeze. Then, as the race continued, my mind quickly switched gears from blind optimism to questioning my ability. I found myself wondering, how am I going to survive? Like me, as your time went on, you may have felt that grain of self-doubt. Perhaps it was all the memorization, 
too many AP classes, or the dreaded junior year was just dragging you down. But somehow, it happens. You didn't know if you were going to make it. When this self-doubt creeps in, it's hard to move on. That's when I began thinking, I'm quitting. This is it. I'm done. I'm throwing in the towel. It's over. But I was like you, class of 2020. You are not quitters. Somehow, you just kept going. Whether it was in the classroom, or on the court, or the field, in a competition, on the stage, you pushed through. You just kept moving. You decided to show up to study at 7.30 in the morning for that test. You put in countless hours rehearsing for the musical or running in the halls for conditioning. No matter what your struggle, you decided you weren't going to quit. It was hard at times, and you seriously were ready to give up, but you didn't. So what is it that helped you move on? How did you overcome self-doubt and inability to continue? Support. On race day, I remember seeing the streets lined with signs encouraging the runners. I remember feeling motivated and thinking, wow, there are a lot of people here to support me. That's what you've had. So at this moment, I want you to envision your own fan club. Close your eyes and picture the auditorium with every seat filled. Imagine your mom or dad, grandparents or best friend, holding a sign that says, you're almost there. Can you imagine Mrs. Clark holding a sign that says, I hope you live a life you're proud of, F. Scott Fitzgerald. And Mr. Imler, your time at Everett may be history, but the class of 2020 will never be forgotten. Oh, and Miss Steele waving her banner, unlike Casey, you knocked it out of the park. Look at Mrs. Volbrecht. You're so awesome, your limits don't exist. Wow. Mrs. Klein says, may your universe always be expanding, your string theory play in harmony, and the inner molecular force be with you. And listen, Mr. Markle is playing the quadratic formula song in the background. You are more loved and more cared about than you can imagine. If you ever doubt that, just remember, Mr. Byers even learned how to use Zoom for you. Think back to the sporting events, concerts, musicals, competitions, where you had someone there cheering you on. Didn't this help get you through? Now, encouragement can get you really close, but you also need a strong will to get you the rest of the way. This is what it feels like when you see the 26 mile marker. 0.2 miles. I'm there. I'm doing it. I'm going to make it. This is where you were on March 13th. In fact, I remember giving you a calendar layout of exactly how close we were to being done for the school year. Then a world pandemic hit. How could COVID-19 take you out of the race. Wait, remember, you're not quitters. Online learning sure took a lot of self-discipline, an insane amount of patience, and maybe even some tears. Although I think that was on my part because I missed you so much. But somehow you gathered every ounce of persistence and pushed through to the end. Now, since life is a marathon, not a sprint, you're only crossing your first finish line. You are only steps from beginning your next race. Therefore, I would like to share with you some of my favorite running advice that I've been given over the years. First, my friend Michelle, whom I ran my first ever race with, told me to make a plan and stick to it, but don't be afraid to adjust it. Many of you have your plans set. You know what college you're going to. 
You're going to be teachers, physical therapists, pediatricians, engineers, nurses. You could be going to the military or going straight to the workforce. You've made your plans. Now to successfully reach those goals, you've got to stick with it. You've got to work for it. But don't forget that if you find your training plan isn't quite taking you in the right direction, make adjustments. In the end, it's better to change your goal than to reach one that won't make you happy. Next, my brother always tells me to keep my wits about myself. He encouraged me to know my surroundings. He never wanted me to be surprised by an unexpected stranger or a wild animal. So following his advice, I pay attention to what's going on around me. I take my earbuds out and listen to the sounds of nature and enjoy the experience that I'm having. I encourage you to do the same. Don't be afraid to disconnect and enjoy your life. Actually listen to what other people have to say instead of constantly being tuned into your AirPods. You may find your relationships are more meaningful when you give those around you your full attention. My mom's advice was to find a good running partner. Her concern was having someone with me when I run in the early hours of the morning, when it's dark out. She wanted someone with me to be there for me, to support me and encourage me. Somebody that would stick it out during the really long training runs and give it 110% during hill sprints. Isn't that what we all want in a partner? My suggestion for you is to look for the same thing in a husband or wife. Find someone who lifts you up, someone who pushes you further to be a better person, someone who is there for you in the dark times to help you through, someone who will give it their all and never quit, no matter how hard it may get. Finally, my favorite piece of advice I've read in almost every runner's magazine is don't compare yourself to anyone else. You need to run your own race at your own pace. It doesn't matter who's in front of you or behind you. Worry about what's best for you. So don't be afraid to step back from social media. You don't need to compare yourself to anyone else. Stay as far away from drama as possible. If you focus on your own goals and how to reach them, you will be more successful and will lead a much happier life. Now, all that I have left are some runner's best wishes for your future. May the wind always be at your back. May your water station never be empty. May you run more downhills than uphills and may you always push through to the finish line. You've got this class of 2020. You're on to your next marathon. You're at the starting line. On your mark, get set, go. I wish you only the best, and I have all the faith in the world that you will go the distance. I love you and God bless you. I would now like to introduce to the podium Matthew Wilt, the Class of 2020 President. Greetings, friends, family, faculty, alumni, and the illustrious Class of 2020. My name is Matthew Wilt, and I'm here to address you in the best way I know how. First, I want to congratulate all of my fellow graduates in the Class of 2020. On behalf of the class, I would like to thank the entire faculty, administration, and members of the school board for making this day possible. I would also like to recognize our outstanding custodial and cafeteria staff for all the hard work they do behind the scenes. Our cafeteria staff has a reputation for serving the best food in the entire region. Finally, I would like to thank the parents, grandparents, guardians, aunts, uncles, cousins, siblings, and everyone else in attendance who helped to make us what we are today. We truly wouldn't be here without you. You're probably wondering, I know I am, where did all the time go? I can remember sitting in kindergarten thinking, time is going so slowly, I'll never make it to sixth grade. 
Boy, was I wrong. Except for the last few months, our time together has flown by. Recently, our senior rites of passage have been upended. For us, there will be no prom, no senior trip, no banquets, and no graduation ceremony. We've had time to mourn what has been taken from us, and yet we are thankful that our sacrifices helped each of us keep our family, friends, and community healthy and safe. To mourn this loss of senior passage means that we have truly loved and cared for each other as classmates and friends. Now it's time to move on to the next chapter in our lives. Whether we move on to a job, college, trade school, an apprenticeship, or military service, no matter the route, we're all headed in the same direction, one of change. There's going to be a lot of happy moments, but there's also going to be some very, very, very tough and unfair moments. But I have faith in our ability to persevere, because while it is true life will bring us challenges, we are the class of 2020. Our class has had to overcome challenges right from the beginning. It all started in sixth grade, when we were uprooted a year early and sent up to the big new high school. Now, while we, were, while we did miss out on a full year of sixth grade recess, we did enjoy that beautiful new school ambiance and fabulous a la carte lunches. My mother used to say, oh, you should be honored to be the first sixth grade class at the new high school. Huh. Yeah, real honored. After all, for that first year, the high school was still a virtual construction site. You know, pipes exploded, fire alarms went off at random times, and things broke down quite a bit. You know, it was a place where giants roamed the halls. I can remember feeling intimidated by the seniors who looked our way. You know, when you're a sixth grader having only two minutes between classes, it can take some getting used to. I can remember personally having to run the whole length of the building from the art room to the gym in under two minutes. Perhaps, yeah, you know, that's where Caitlin got her start on track. The administration put a little too much trust on, in us early on. They let us have our own locks, which was a big mistake. Some of the sixth graders forgot their combinations quite a bit, and I can remember hearing the announcement, Mrs. Johnson, please report to the office with the bolt cutters. Mrs. Johnson to the office with the bolt cutters. Just about every day. Now, just as we're about to graduate and begin a new chapter in our life, we're about to witness the most class of 2020 thing to ever happen. A global pandemic which has caused school to close and shut its doors in March with everyone cooped up at home through graduation. I won't lie to you. This is pretty bad, but as a fellow member of the class of 2020, I'm confident that we'll make it through this together and we'll come out on the other side stronger and better than before. Our time at Everett High School is best explained by who we are today. We're the canvas on which our experiences have been painted as the class of 2020. The person I am today is a direct result of what I have experienced during my time here. We're the painted canvas, and I believe that each one of us is like a work of art. We're the living proof of the impact our last four years has made. Each of us tells a story of our time here, of being freshmen and thinking that the seniors were gods and we were mere mortals, of being sophomores and thinking we had all the time in the world, of being juniors and thinking that graduation couldn't come fast enough, of being seniors and wishing that it never would, of the teachers who invested in us and expanded our worldview beyond what we could ever imagine, of the classmates and friends who had been there the whole time, we all tell the story, not with words, but with who we are. The brush strokes left on our lives, and it serves as proof that our time here has been real and special and meaningful. And so the diploma that we'll ultimately receive, it won't do justice to our time here. The only thing that can really express what the class of 2020 means is us. It's who we are. It's a direct result of who the class is. We're all still but a rough draft of who we were destined to become. We'll continue to grow and to learn, and we'll make new friends and form new memories on the canvas of life. So to my fellow graduates, I just want to say, if you get one thing out of this experience, I hope it's a passion, a passion to learn, to live, and most importantly, to persevere. Anytime you get stuck in a jam, you can look back and say, huh, well, I made it through the mess that was the end of high school, so this is a piece of cake. I know all of you have that drive it takes to succeed and to persevere for a better and brighter future. There's no more waiting for tomorrow. There's only, let's get it done today because the future, it doesn't wait for you. 
You have to make it. Take everything you've learned, not just in the classroom, but in the hallways and out on the streets, and take your life experience and go out and paint that picture. Our stories are the ladders of life that make it easier to touch the stars. Climb and touch them. Grab onto your dreams. At the core, none of us were meant to be common. We were born to be comets darting across space and time, leaving our mark as we crash into everything. A, a crater is a reminder that something special happened here, an indelible impact that shook up the world. Are we not astronomers searching for the next shooting star? Education, it's no equalizer. Rather, it's the sleep that precedes the great American dream. So it's time to wake up. Lift up your voice and patch every hole in the broken sky until you know your true potential. We've been black holes in these classrooms for far too long, absorbing everything without allowing any of our light to escape. Those days, they're just about over. So now, it's time for us to belong among the stars. Together, we're going to inspire galaxies of greatness for generations to come. The sky, it's not the limit. It's just the beginning. Good luck, class of 2020. The class with 2020 vision. It is now my honor to introduce this year's alumni speaker. This year's speaker is Mr. James Markle. Mr. Markle? Class of 2020, what an honor you have given me to be your alumni speaker. I still remember the first time I saw many of you as I was given another opportunity, an opportunity to teach one of the eighth grade classes. That group came to my room with wide eyes, some anxious, some scared, some playing it cool because they were in the high school taking their math class, and some were just like another day in life, seeming like nothing at all was different. This is the same look that I would assume I would see on your faces if you were in front of me now as you prepare for the next step in your journey. You are an awesome group of students who have definitely made your mark in my life and my heart forever. So what words of wisdom can I share as a fellow alumni? I began this task a while back and thought, Class of 2020, 2020 is perfect vision. You all can see clearly where you are going and what is ahead. Then March 13th came and all of our lives were much different. We heard the all call to get our stuff as we could, would not be back for a week or maybe two. Our 2020 vision definitely wasn't working so well. That speech went out the window and I began to think of other types of vision. Hindsight. Many of you would have savored that last dance at homecoming a little more, hung out in the hall with your friends a little longer. You would have laughed a little more at your lunch table, stayed after the game to enjoy that special moment, and even tried to complete one more math question, or maybe not. Yes, some of these moments were cut short, but those moments you did have will be looked on with fondness for years to come. Foresight. We can't change the past, but we can learn from it and have the foresight to appreciate every moment we get. Use the things you have learned to plan and prepare for your future. Take time to savor your friendships. Enjoy each moment as if it were the last. Appreciate the individuals who have helped polish you into the person you have become and given you the opportunities to achieve your goals. Be cautious with your words, as it may be the last thing someone will remember about you. But stand by your words and actions as they represent the person you are and what you will be remembered for. And as you are thinking about types of vision, don't forget those that are a little bit tarnished. Be cautious not to be nearsighted and not look into the future. Don't be farsighted and miss the beautiful things that are right in front of you. Then there are those with blinders on who only see their own path and don't realize how it affects others as well as themselves. I ask that you have a warrior's vision. A warrior sees everything around them and takes a survey before they put their plan into action. Use the insight of your forefathers to learn from their experiences and use them to make your generation a better place. Finally, and this is the task that I leave with you as new alumni. Share your experiences with future generation of warriors so that they can learn from your knowledge and make their lives even better. Yes, class of 2020, 
please come back and share with us what you have done and what you have learned so that future generations of warriors can learn from the great ones who have come before. So with those bright eyes of yours, go out and face the world. Your stars have been polished and you have much to learn and much to share. We, your community and fellow warriors, look forward to all you have to accomplish. You are mighty warriors with a wonderful warrior vision and a path of greatness ahead of you. I wish you all the best and congratulate you on your graduation. May God bless you in all you do, watch over you, and guide your path as you move forward.
Graduating class of 2020, as I pondered what to say to you, with all the commotion that has entered into your senior year, it struck me that this was merely an obstacle in your life and career. COVID-19 is probably not the first obstacle you have encountered, more certain that it will not be the last. Regardless, I think most would agree that this problem is a larger scale obstacle that impacts so many areas of our lives, our physical well-being, personal finances, state and federal finances, schools, businesses, churches, gyms, gatherings, and so much more. So what is the significance to you and what message do we, as an educational institution, want you to gain from this experience? We have been faced with circumstances that are new to everyone. It is new for our federal government, our state leaders, our administration, new for our teachers, our parents, students, and for those loved ones and friends that we normally see on a daily basis. COVID-19 is something different than our country as a whole has seen for quite a long time. Yes, this dilemma has brought about many changes beyond our control. Let's look into what this means to a graduating senior with your entire life ahead of you. You have heard it said many times that high school is not the end, but a beginning. High school ends a chapter in your life, and your high school experience certainly ended differently than most. However, you are about to begin the next chapter in your life. Think about those lessons with driving a car. Keep your eyes on the road. Don't play with the radio. No texting. Look ahead of you and anticipate the obstacles. This time in your life is not really all that different from learning to drive. Stay focused on the road ahead. Don't spend too much time looking in the rear view mirror and focus on your task at hand. My thinking here is that problems we face in life can inspire us to move past them, or those same problems can become barriers to success. I am encouraging you not to allow this roadblock to change your pathway. Follow your dreams and know where you are planning to arrive. That way, you can take a different path or road, and you will still end up in the place that you intended to be. Ask yourself a question. Will this matter a year from now, two years from now, or a month from now? The truth is, it may matter. And that will depend mostly on how you decide to handle both the problem and your solution to the complications that came with it. The key is the attitude that each individual takes when presented with a dilemma, and if the dilemma actually presents an opportunity or a barrier. Truly, every challenge in life pre presents both opportunities and barriers. Those individuals who choose to see the opportunity tend to seek out solutions and therefore gain confidence in their ability to persevere. The key here is how you choose to view adversity. I am hoping you view it as a challenge with opportunity and that you can find a way to inspire your spirit to stay on track with your goals. Remember that it is important to know where you want to end up so that your true direction is always evident, even if a different pathway becomes necessary. There are many ways to get to Pittsburgh, Altoona, or the beach for that matter. No single road is the only option, and for various reasons, you may have to take an alternate route. The key is that you understand where your destination lies. Nelson Mandela said, it always seems impossible until it is done. When planning with the end in mind, which road you have to take really plays a minor role. COVID-19 is a blocked road for now, but does not block your path to your dreams and desires. 
There are other roads and options to arrive at your destination. I encourage you to keep the faith and follow your dreams. You and your perception of the problem are the only permanent barriers to your career or your life. Plan to overcome the obstacles in the way and continue your mission with the end in mind. Difficulties are meant to rouse, not discourage. The human spirit is to grow strong by conflict. William Channing. This circumstance may change you, but it should not be capable of reducing your achievements. Richard Scott stated, life never was intended to be easy. Rather, it is a period of proving and growth. It is interwoven with difficulties, challenges, and burdens. We are immersed in a sea of persistent worldly pressures that could destroy our happiness. Yet these very forces, if squarely faced, provide opportunity for tremendous personal growth and development. The conquering of adversity produces strength of character, forges self-confidence, engenders self-respect, and assures success in righteous endeavor. Thomas Edison stated, many of life's failures are people who did not realize how close they were to success when they gave up. Helen Keller said, character cannot be developed in ease and quiet. Only through experience of trial and suffering can the soul be strengthened, vision cleared, ambition inspired, and success achieved. It is my hope that each and every person will look at this time and realize that the changes were beyond our control. But the solution still lies in front of each and every person. Yes, there is opportunity, but it may look different than what you are used to. It may require a pathway you did not expect to take. That does not mean your destination needs to change or that your dreams are different now. Stay focused on your goals with the end in mind. Be aware and compassionate to those around you and strive to make your contribution to society an addition that will make a difference in our world. Truly, we should all strive to make the world a better place for everyone. Personal success will come along with your ability to remain focused, persevere through challenges, view obstacles as opportunities, and spread kindness in our world. In summary, never give up. Don't be limited by your perception of the problem or the constraints. Remember that success is rooted in your ability to gain confidence through a concerted effort to attain your defined goals. Thank you. Now for the moment we've all been waiting for. Would the graduating class of 2020 please stand? By the powers vested in me, through the Everett Area Board of Education and the Pennsylvania Department of Education, I pronounce you graduates. Congratulations.
Hello, State Senator Wayne Langerholz here, and I would like to wish congratulations and best wishes for continued success to the Everett Senior High School class of 2020. While this graduation is not anything you could have possibly envisioned at, at the beginning of this year, know that you are in our thoughts and we wish you every sort of success in the future. I know that the education you received at Everett will serve a strong foundation. And whatever you choose to decide to do as you leave this school, do it to the best of your abilities and go do good in this world, for we need it now more than ever. Again, congratulations, class of 2020.